So folks, this is our third video in our review of partial fraction decomposition. In the first video, we introduced the general idea and we worked an example um, for doing that decomposition. In the second video, we showed why partial fraction decomposition is a useful technique in integration. And likewise, it'll be a useful technique in differential equations, both in this chapter and actually again when we get into the um, Laplace transformations portion of this course. At the end of that, I asked you to go ahead and decompose your own um, uh, fraction, and I've gone ahead and given you the solution to that, so you can take a look. Uh, let me know if you had any questions on that. And so let's continue on. So the next thing I want to say is that partial fraction decomposition only works after the rational function is reduced. And what do I mean by that? Well, uh, if we think about this fraction right here, say 17 thirds, uh, when, when you learned about fractions way back in elementary school, you were told to rewrite this maybe this way, to write it as 5 and 2 thirds, and we would say that that is, that is uh, simplified and, re and maybe reduced down. Um, and what we, what we mean by reduced when we're dealing with polynomials, though, is we look at degrees. So for polynomials, look at degrees. And so let's look at question number six here, where I'm asking you to decompose this fraction through partial fraction decomposition. And again, maybe your goal is to integrate this fraction or something like that. But we don't begin the partial fraction decomposition until we've reduced this fraction down. Look at the degree of the denominator. The degree of the denominator is 2. And the degree of the numerator is 4. And we're not going to consider one of these reduced unless the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. So let's just say that, that this is reduced if the degree of the numerator is strictly less than the degree of the denominator. And so that's certainly not the case here. The degree of the uh, numerator is 4, which is larger than 2, and certainly not less than 2. So before we begin partial fraction decomposition, what you often have to do is a process of long division. So I just want to review that real quick. You, you probably know this, but if you've forgotten, or it's been a while, let's do a quick review. So I'm going to long divide the denominator into the numerator. And hopefully you remember that when you do this, you need to put some placeholder values whenever you have terms of 0 or I mean, I guess you don't have to do that, but this is the technique that we teach. If you know another way, you're welcome to use it. And now we perform the process of long division. And the way we play the game of long division is we say, what do I need to multiply x squared by to make it look like x to the fourth? And the answer is, as another factor of x squared. So then I will multiply x squared to each of these two uh, terms and collect them in the appropriate column. So this gives me x to the fourth and then a minus x squared. And then this was the part where students always got into trouble. I'm then going to subtract this down and carry everything down. So we get minus 5x cubed plus x squared plus 0x plus 2. And then we say, OK, well, just like before, what do I need to multiply x squared by to make it to look like negative 5x cubed, or, or what I have here, negative 5x cubed? So I'm going to multiply that by a minus 5x. Then again, just as before, I'm going to multiply this to both terms. And when I do so, let's see what we get. This gives me the minus 5x cubed. That's what I wanted. And then plus a 5x. And then don't forget this part. This is where you can get into trouble. Don't forget to subtract this down. And when you do so, we end up with x squared minus 5x plus 2. Notice that the degree of the numerator is, or the degree of this term right here is the same as the degree of this term. So I continue performing the long division. So we say, well, OK, well, what can I multiply x squared by to make it look like x squared? And the answer is just 1. So we multiply by x squared, and we carry that, uh, uh, the rest of the multiplication through. And then I subtract down. Let me be consistent. And when I do so, I get a minus 5x plus 1. So that means that the original fraction can be written as x to the fourth minus 5. Well, here, let me recopy the original fraction. And we can rewrite this as x squared minus 5x plus 1, where I got all of those terms from the long division, plus the remainder, which is minus 5x plus 1 over the divisor, which was our x squared minus 1. In this case, we've actually already done the work if we thought of this as this expression here, 
5x minus 1 all over x squared minus 1. If I factor out a negative, and this is the same question that you had before. Uh, if you look at the previous page, I asked you to decompose this fraction here. So we've actually done all the work for the decomposition. And uh, it looks like I dropped the 1 there, plus 1. Uh, and then we had, on the previous page, we had minus, and so this would be minus 1 over x minus 1, and I'll distribute that negative, minus 4 over x plus 1. And there we've decomposed this fraction, and the key highlight here is that we had to first put the fraction in a reduced format before we continued. Okay, we'll continue on in the next video, and we'll look at a few more special cases.